Tyree. 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 The Tyree Wave Classic. The Tyree Wave Classic. The world's longest running professional wave sailing event. Year 39. Year 39. 39. Nearly 40. <laughs> Strong wind. <sighs> Big waves. Epic competition. The British title. The sword. Windsurfing's most iconic prize. Oh my god! <laughs> Double forward, Miguel Chapui. Huge back loop. Anything's possible, and I just have to give it a go. Nestled amongst the Inner Hebrides in Scotland, the ancient island of Tyree is battle-worn. The scars are everywhere, no more so than on the Ringing Stone, an erratic brought to the island during the last Ice Age. The stone bears the marks of bloody sacrifice or fertility ceremonies dating back 2500 BC. Year after year, the challengers come again, ready for the competition ready for whatever the weather and the Isle of Tyree can throw at them. I'd like to thank everyone for travelling from all over the UK and further afield to make the pilgrimage to Tyree for our event this year. This is year 39. It's the longest running professional wave sailing event in the world. So uh, it all started here. This is where, you know, wave sailing started to become big. You know, it's just, it's been something that you tee up for every single year. The highlight is waiting on October. It's kind of fixed on the calendar at the beginning of the year and you look forward to it all the way through the year. And it's one of the most unique windsurf locations in the world. You get awesome waves, awesome beaches, never too crowded. Um, so yeah, it's a very special place. It's got to be yeah, 20 years and it's been every single year. I don't think I've missed one. It's such a privilege to be able to come up here and compete. Um, and like winning a sword or the possibility of winning a sword, like there's no cooler trophy than that. In this, the 39th edition of the Tyree Wave Classic, there are 73 competitors across the five fleets. The men's pro fleet, the amateurs, the masters, the women's and the future pros. All have made the pilgrimage to the island for one reason, to win the iconic broadsword. Everybody's here battling for the sword, so to speak, um, and the, you know, the competition here is really fierce. It will be a struggle, you know, but equally I'm looking forward to trying to measure up. Yeah, it's a really iconic trophy and yeah, as soon as I saw it, I actually knew like one day I would be here and try to claim it. In the pro fleet, Phil Horrocks, a regular winner on Tyree, is back again in search of a record equaling sixth title. The pressure is on. You know what? I feel probably less pressure than I ever do. There's lots of little things that I know that all these young kids who are little, really good and the great sailors probably, you know, maybe better than me, whatever. But I know this bit more, you know, I've been doing it longer. So I think I still feel confident with it. Tyree has long been an incubator for the UK wave windsurfing scene. Generation after generation keep coming. Lucas Meldrum is the latest, coming right through the Mailing Room Future Pros program to last year, where he almost beat Phil to the British title. Lucas finished above Phil in the double elimination, but Horrocks wrestled his position back in the unusual triple elimination phase. In 2023, Lucas is back again with a vengeance. The scene is set and we're all ready for a fierce battle. It was definitely, let's say, a confidence booster. Now it's almost like a, a, it's possible to beat these guys. I feel more confident about what to do now um, after doing quite a few years of youth competition and, and obviously the UK stuff. Lucas is really pushing and he's been pushing for a number of years. And he's getting more experience and he's been here more time. So, and I can see his eyes are way further ahead than looking at beating me, you know, he's like looking at how can he be World Cup 
you know, status and all this sort of stuff. And so there is a little, you know, a little seed of doubt there that, you know. Phil's a very good competitor and he knows what to do, like, in each situation. I mean, I know that everybody can, anybody on their day can win a competition. Likewise, anybody can lose a competition in one day. I still feel confident that if I go and, and do my best, I can, I can beat him. You know, Lucas, he's put the time in. He's gone to the Canaries in the summers. He's done the world tour stuff. He's doing big jumps. His wave riding has really come on. So he's at that level now where he's deserving of what he's getting. I mean, Phil's a born competitor. He's been doing it for years. Lucas is up and coming and you, you never know, but I think Phil's still got what it takes. There's no foregone conclusions. We talk about these two, but that's not the whole story here. There's previous um, you know, British uh, event winners at this as well, the likes of James Cox, for example. Warren Cornwall has beaten Phil previously. Uh, Andy Chambers has been perpetually on the scene, champing away at the heels. And let's not forget the people that have travelled from further afield, the international riders. I've only sailed with Lucas Meldrum. I'm actually quite happy to just be sailing with a new fleet of pros. We always have somebody you know, who upsets the apple cart a little bit. So everything to play for is going to be a really exciting event. The fleets have been on standby throughout the beginning of the competition, but Big Wednesday is looming. With a rock steady forecast, it means an early start for all fleets across the Pole Beach. It looks set to be a classic, Tyree Wave Classic. Good morning, happy days, how are we doing? Morning. 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 Good, good morning, Colin, how are you? Morning, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, here we are, Sam. Cross the pole, cross on. Everybody's out, they're absolutely loving it at the moment. The heat board's there, we're ready to go. Just waiting for the judge to make the call now. It's probably a little bit early for me to be sailing. I'm usually uh, like an afternoon sailor. It's always an early start in Tyree, and with great conditions, head judge Adrian Jones gets the competition started. It looks brilliant out there for competing today. We're going to go two jumps, two rides and eight minute heats and we're going straight into the amateurs and ladies to start with. He's going about 30 knots now. It looks like it's going to go up to 40, 45. Throughout the day it'll get bigger as this tide pushes out, the wave will start to clean up. Classic Tyree Wave classic. Yep, for all concerns. <laughs> classic day begins with the amateurs and ladies fleets just after 9.30 a.m. The first pair of Mario Brasso from Tenerife and Oliver Randall get the heat started. Looks really fun though. Good for jumping, good power and good waves I think. So it's going to be really fun. The results board soon reveals Mario Brasso charging through the ranks with some cracking sailing against Oliver Randall, then Henry Norton. Whilst on the other side of the draw, Charlie Locke and Arthur Fox also progress through. The AMS fleet is poised for the quarters, while the women get underway. The women's fleet, uniquely sponsored this year by Hebridean Roast, all sail together. Can Leith Campbell start to reclaim her British title from Corin McFarlane, who beat her last year in similar conditions? Corey takes the first win, with Leith in second. Two wins from Leah Campbell, one win from uh, Cory McFarlane, so it's all to play for for the women. Leah takes the next three heats, but it's Annika Lowe who sails into second overall, placing second once and third twice. Back in the amateur fleet, Mario Brasso continues his run, along with Luke Williams, Nick Welsh and Charlie Locke. Mario Brasso and Charlie Locke turn on the style, both winning places in the final, while Nick Welsh and Luke Williams will face off for third place. There's pretty similar conditions to Ross Niger, which is my local, so it's pretty fun, so I'll see what I can do. In the building breeze, Charlie Locke lands some impressive forward loops, with Brasso executing technical wave rides throughout. The amateur men's final is a close call. The most fun part of the day probably, it was proper windy, uh, still good waves, so super good fun. However, 
In the fight for third place, Luke Williams struggles to put it together against Nick Welsh, with the final result all but announced. In third place, Nick Welsh. Tiny four competition between uh, Mario Brasso and Charlie Locke. In first place, Mario Brasso. Second place, Charlie Locke. Well done, guys. I was pretty lucky with the conditions because I come from the cannery, so we have a little bit of onshore vortex, so we, I felt like at home today. So we've also got a round of the women's complete as well, so four rounds of women completed. In first place, we've got Leah Campbell. Uh, in second place, new girl Annika Lowe. And yeah. in third place, current champion, Corey McFarlane. Happy with where I am at the moment, super stoked with that, that's really good. Um, but yeah, we'll just see. I think it's going to get some big waves later in the week. So I'm not very good in them. They're quite challenging. So we'll yeah, we'll just see. But it's good. Join us in part two to learn the fates of pro riders Lucas Meldrum and Phil Horrocks in their fight for the 2023 Tyree and British titles. We will also bring you the rest of the action from all of the fleet, including the Masters and Future Pros, as all is decided in the infamous double elimination phase. Welcome back to the Tyree Wave Classic 2023, the world's longest running professional wave sailing event. This is year 39. The pro men's single elimination is about to begin. There are 15 men in the pro fleet. Seasoned professional Phil Horrocks has the chance to take a step towards a record equaling sixth title. Standing in his way are a number of challengers namely Lucas Meldrum. This phase, the single elimination, is all about riders establishing themselves as high up the pecking order as possible, so they have the best chance of a good place in the subsequent and decisive double elimination phase. I think this will be fun. Stoked, can't wait. First hit in Tyree, see how we go. Go! Woohoo! It's man on man, eight minute heat, judged on the two best wave rides and two best jumps. With Meldrum and Horrocks seeded ahead, they await their opponents. I mean, this is only the first round and already the action is pretty hot. Fantastic. Tweak push loop. Miguel Chapui. Wow! Massive air time. After round one, Phil and Lucas enter the fray and, as expected, advance quickly towards the latter stages. Sick bottom turn. Oh my god. Yeah, wave 360 back of the face. Yeah, lovely work from Lucas. And he throws it into a one-handed back loop. So that's Phil Horrocks, a multiple-time British champion. Now we're seeing the calibre. Spanish newcomer Miguel Chapui of Tarifa also catches the eye, beating Phil's brother Dave Horrocks to secure a spot in the first semi-final against the reigning British champion. Unbelievably, this is the semi-final. I'll be very curious to see how this heat goes. Here we go, big stretch, one-handed back loop. The heat goes to the wire, with Chapui attempting a radical double forward. That's not going to count. Pretty windy, struggle a little bit, but I don't know, we have to wait and see. Had you done that double forward and landed it, I think that would have secured it, but Phil Horrocks goes through oh. with one in second place. Well done, guys. <laughs> Legend of the UK Wave Tour, Andy Bubble Chambers is up against Lucas Meldrum. After knocking out another serious contender and old foe, James Cox. Andy Chambers repping. Lucas sails well, looking solid against Bubble, one of his longtime idols. He does enough to beat him, advancing to face Phil in the final for the first time ever on Tyree. Back up against Phil Horace. Yes, the old enemy. <laughs> Back against Lucas. This time, personal. Lucas and Phil come flying out the blocks with one handed back loops, stalled, and tabletop forwards. Big action here with Lucas Meldrum at the beginning of the winner's final. Phil with speed. Here we go. Their jump scores appear to be similar 
meaning it will be decided by their waves. That's unusual. You don't see Phil miss those frontside turns often. There was only two points in it, and the winner, Lucas Meldrum. Yay! Second place, Phil Horrocks. It's been a long day waiting, and uh, and it's been a very, very windy on the water, especially that last two. And uh, no, but we're super happy. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy with where I'm at. It's not finished yet, so. And I've been at where he is before and lost, so this time we've got to turn it around. Lucas really pulled it out of the bag today, but if we get more wind on Friday, it's going to be the double elimination. I think Horrocks is going to be hungry for him. Amateurs, women's and pro single done. It's just the Masters, and as always friendly, but serious competition. You never know from one heat to the next what's going to happen. Uh, we all could have done something different, but we did what we did and it turned out all right in the end. Pretty happy with that. Down here before daybreak, one round, all the fleets, results in for everyone. Couldn't be happier. The Tyree Wave Classic is more than just a windsurf event. It's a community of like-minded individuals who make the pilgrimage every year to this magical island. And in between the single and possible Big Friday double, the organisers and sponsors throw a beach barbecue for everyone with MasterChef winner Thomas Frake. And the future pros get to compete alongside their heroes. The final day of competition has arrived. It's a typically early start on the feared west coast beach of Balafuel. The scene is set for a memorable double elimination. This is the big day of the week, strangely coinciding with the final day. I don't know what it is about Tyree. It's always left to the 11th hour with us to try and figure out who is the best. There's quite a lot on the line today. There's the Tyree Wave Classic, which is amazing, but we've also got the British title, so. We've got big groundswell, cross offshore conditions. Uh, this is exactly the kind of stuff that everyone's come here for. Very, 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 with another very windy. It's on the out of control scale. We've got a lot of carnage to do. It looks nuking out there. We're going to start the pro double this morning, straight off the bat. So double elimination gives sailors that got knocked out in the earliest round a chance to even win the competition still. All of the leaders are down there. Lucas Meldrum is in first. Phil Horrocks sitting in second. Miguel Chapuis from three for in third. Andy Chambers in fourth. There's a few guys that are further down than perhaps there should be, so it'll be interesting to see who the one person that comes through the double is, because it could be any one of them. Uh, hopefully, all goes to plan. Although the trouble is, I haven't made the plan yet, so I have to make that up as I go. The men's pro double gets underway early with rounds of 10 minute heats where two wave rides and two jumps are judged. The first big crunch heat sees Rory Somerville lose to Ben Page and Dave Horrocks against James Cox. That's frustrating, yeah. Got absolutely trawled on the way out. Spent the next two minutes swimming. So that kind of set the tone, really. The organisers start to feed women's heats in as well although there is some reticence. I think we were all quite anxious last night when they said we were on this morning. Yeah, might be worth a go. The pro men's competition enters the man-on-man -man ladder with Paige and Cox. There's no quarter given and mistakes are punished. We've got the death heat going on behind me here. That's the first of the real big players. James Cox versus Ben Page. 
Coxie's plan seems to be coming together as he goes on to face Andy Bubble Chambers. Yeah, I mean, I, I was up against him two days ago. He beat me. He's a really, really good sailor. It's going to be a difficult heat. Huge back loop. Andy Chambers. Radical action from both of these top seeded guys. As expected, the margin between the two was negligible. Yeah, 0.5. Was it? it? Yeah. Half a point. Shit, man. Damn. Right, good luck, eh? Yeah, thank you. Coxie is sailing out of his skin. He's on a charge. Up next is world tour rider Miguel Chapuis. But first, the women sail their final deciding heat. In tough conditions, Leith Campbell and Anna Colo stand out, placing first and second respectively, with Izzy Adcock completing the podium. The wind's like super up and down. Yeah. So, like you'll go for a jump and then just land with absolutely nothing to save you. The wind's a bit up and down, but otherwise it's, uh, it's pretty fun. Now, with eyes firmly fixed on the men's pro fleet, it's Miguel Chapuis versus the informed James Cox. Reel to reel, loosening off the tail, a tight, radical, and in the pocket. That's going to be a very, very high scoring wave. Miguel hitting the lip, rocket airtime. He's still up. Wave after wave, there was very little separating the two until the final minute. James Cox with this lively reel-to-reel -reel approach that James has. And we've got Miguel coming in on a big one in behind him. He looks for the radical action with a one-handed goiter back onto the wave phase. After five rounds and four consecutive wins, Coxie's plan comes undone, with Chapui advancing to face Phil Horrocks once more. Phil starts well, immediately hitting two high-scoring waves. But, something appears to be wrong. Phil might be injured on the inside. What's going on? Is the dream over? I kind of... When I, I came round and then the front foot went like that, but it went like pop-pop, and I was like, ouch, so it should be good. Oh. It's the end of it for me, yeah. for now. Yeah, OK. Sorry to hear that. You were saying what we reckon, eh? Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sucks. Yeah, I feel bad for him, but um, yeah. it's it happens, I guess. It does look like the British title is possibly going to go to Lucas. So the final pairing is decided in a way that no one would have chosen. But it is friends and now rivals Miguel Chapui against Lucas Meldrum. Lucas on a sick, smooth, clean wave face. Down the line, reel to reel action. Miguel Chapui, big steep section, huge aerial. Goes down hard, no score. Lovely angle from the drone there. And hits the aerial. Nice big kick out aerial. Carving off the lip, radical top turn. Shooting down the section, looking for Goita, but off the back. Now we've got Lucas, it's right on the buzzer. I'd love to give you a prediction, I have no idea. In second place, we have Miguel, and place is Lucas Meldrum. Lucas Meldrum takes the Tiny Wave Classic and the British title. Just a big up to Phil. I push a lot because of him. He keeps the level really high, and for both of us, it's a bit of a shame. I guess, yeah, I'm British champion, Tiny Wave Classic champion. Feels weird to say, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> With the men's pro and women's double decided, the only remaining competitions are the amateurs and masters. The masters is decided in a fierce final between Steve Laderman and Alex Rhodes. Well, this guy's a professional tree fella, and he's also been furling down the fellas here as well. Yeah, so, hey, what a legend. Yeah, I like now that. He's, he's done a great job. In a classic amateur double elimination, Connor Fagan from Ross Niger, knocked out in the first round of the single, starts to win. He wins the first three heats to take him straight to the man-on-man -man ladder. 
before going on to meet and dispatching Henry Horton as the first of the man-on-man -man battles. The next few heats in epic conditions, he faces Luke Williams, then last year's runner-up Nick Welsh, and another Ross Niger local, Charlie Locke. He has won eight straight heats, and now the big final against Mario Brasser. He looked really good, so it's gonna be a super intense battle, and I like intense battles. An intense battle ensued, with Conor Fagan winning the first heat and forcing a super final. The overall winner is announced later at the awards evening. Was that then Conor actually went on to be crowned this year's Tyree Wave Classic first. <laughs> As the champions are crowned, we say goodbye to this magical island until next year and the 40th anniversary of the Tyree Wave Classic.